Uh, with uh, some reaction to bond moves overnight. And Simon, uh, what's also interesting is that the 10-year yield, according out from Goldman Sachs Asset Management, should climb 50 bips in the medium term. Uh, so uh, they've baked in two more hikes this year. Are you saying that that, on the basis of last night's data, is a sound assessment? Oh, I think that would be rather surprising, I think, mm. at this stage, to be completely honest with you, Carson. Mm. Uh, and we're seeing that from some comments by Fed members as well that are really... You know, they're, they're certainly talking about this June tightening being locked in, but they're looking at reassessing the future path of interest rate increases. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really follows what we're seeing yields do. I mean, you know, as we see more uncertainty around the ability for the US government to implement a lot of measures that have been expected this year, mm -hmm. uh, people are just unwinding that growth expectation. And we've seen a steady mm -hmm. decline in the 10-year rate. Mm. Interestingly, look at the peak back in March, 10 year down 40 basis points, the two year only down about nine basis points. So that really uh, cements that story as well. Mm. It's really interesting the link with the greenback though. I mean, a yeah, point taken on the 10 year, but as far as a, bar a barometer of faith in that fiscal story and what the Fed would like to see, Goldman's saying that they want to see more higher rates plus a stronger dollar or a combo of both. Hence their call out for a 10% strengthening of the greenback, uh, certainly against the yen and euro. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty gutsy uh, re reflation story on, on, on the USD. Look, it certainly is, considering mm. what we're seeing at the moment. And I think mm. the other thing is that, uh, you know, that would, you would want to see higher rates on the back of that. You would need to see higher rates on the back of that. Mm. I mean, we're actually seeing quite the opposite happening at the moment. So I think, uh, you know, it's really going to be interesting uh, at, at what we hear from the, from the Fed. Uh, should we get that June increase uh, in relation to what they expect for the next six months of this year around uh, uh, rate levels? But, uh, uh, you know, it just seems to be, you know, quite soft data at the moment. Mm. Uh, we're really not seeing any major... Uh, call to action by any of the data at the moment or any reason for investors to change their view, mm. which seems to be at the moment quite a negative one. So the recent dec decline in USTs, are you, are you getting clients wanting to position for higher rates? I mean, what is, what is the general kind of response right here for clients? Look, it's interesting. I mean, people are definitely staying on the sidelines. They're definitely mm. buying it, buying into bonds, and that's what you're seeing uh, sort of uh, moving those US yields lower as well. It's good, strong demand, even at current levels. And we're certainly seeing that. I mean, investors uh, that we're seeing, our clients, are really happy to lock in a nice... Uh, fixed income return for the next two to three years because, you know, even looking at our domestic market here, you know, you, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, one foot si mm. either side of the fence. Mm. A lot of people saying we expect rates to be lower. We've certainly seen that call in the last week. And yet, if you have a look at the interest rate curve, it actually suggests that we're, we're probably going to be, you know, status quo and uh, maybe a tightening in 2018. So, mm. you know, I think if you can lock in a decent amount of income and the certainty that, uh, you know, bonds provide your portfolio, you know, investors are really happy to be in that place at the mm. moment. Not least of all, when we come back on the politics and just as soon as we've dealt with France, Italy, uh, fresh focus, uh, the voting system changes, though, that are really ones we're having to brace for. What is that likely to do to, you know, appetite? even uh, for that, you know, paper in, the, in, that, in that sense? Yeah, well, it's been really interesting. We've actually seen a big sell-off in both Italian government bonds and also mm. Italian uh, equities as well. And mm. that's really, as you suggest, it uh, looks like the next Italian election will be quite earlier than expected, possibly later this year. Mm. The uncertainty surrounds, as you mentioned there, the changes to the voting structure there. So it just provides a complete uncertain uh, view of the outcome and what that might be. But obviously, going to an election early, the possibility of a different government really changes the plan and the policies and procedures have been put in place by the current Italian government. So that's just uh, caused investors to go, well, look, don't want to play this game. We're going to move out of Italian uh, exposure at the moment. One final flag, point to flag, a domestic issuance in HSBC, half a billion dollar, three year. What is this all about? Yeah, look, we're seeing lots of issuance at the moment and uh, lots of demand for the uh, take-up of that issuance at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, refinancing of, uh, of uh, bond issues that are rolling off from maturing. You've got the HSBC there, that's HSBC Sydney. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you've also got the Western Australian Treasury Corporation doing a new issue out to 2026. Historically low interest rates, Carson, good time to do it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Move while you still can. Yes. Simon, talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Simon, Michelle. We take a break. When